to the Splash Assess podcast. I'm your host, Amy Quinley. This is the unofficial Jeff Lewis Live after show. Now, if you don't remember, on the last episode I did that aired, oh, I don't know, a week and a half ago on a Friday, I was saying how frustrated I was at the lack of accountability at JLL because we had Zia Alyssa pop in out of nowhere. We didn't address it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, everyone keeps on just doing shit, not addressing it. And then we're just supposed to live as if it's all fine. And then I just disappeared for a week. So I basically did the exact same thing. I took zero accountability. I gave no warning. I did nothing that I wanted them to do because that's our world. Okay. We're all fucking hypocrites. Okay. I accuse you of something. It's because I'm about to do it. And the universe is trying to prepare me and trying to teach me through you. And I choose not to learn. Does any of this make sense? No? Okay, great. Welcome to Splash of Sass. I've missed you guys so much. Where have I been? Who the fuck knows? No, there's been a lot going on in my life, personally, professionally, medically, for um four days. Let's just say, I'll talk about it some other time, but we're back, baby. We're back. That's most important. Um, We also did talk about on today's JLL episode about reaching your limits and how it's good to know your limits. And I will say... I absolutely reached my limit with Jeff Lewis Live a few weeks ago. If you remember with the whole stew, scoo, stew, scoo, with Stu, Stuanna the scammer, I could tell when Jeff was talking that they were absolutely going to hook back up again. And when I tuned in on Tuesday of last week and heard that when Jeff came back from New York, he hung out with Stu. Uh, no, I no, I turned it off. I turned it off and gave myself four days of break. Four days of break because I didn't I didn't want any part of it. I didn't want any part of it, and I've never felt that way about JLL. So let's just say I'm refreshed. I'm refreshed and I'm ready to engage again. I'm reversing my Meredith Marks and I'm re-engaging. All right, so I'm so excited to be back today. I knew today was going to be off to an amazing start. Oh my God, you guys. No, this is wild. Okay, so the first thing that happened was one of my cats, Finnegan, projectile vomited off the kitchen chair. I, I've i never seen... It was like a fountain. He was like a piece of artwork for a second. And he was just like... And it was just like... And just cascaded right into every tile crevice on my floor. And so that was fun to literally also, why is it like when cats are throwing up, they act like there's a tennis ball in their throat. That's the only way that I can describe it. They act like they're actually about to like throw up a boot or something like a boot. It kind of sounded like I said boob, but or a boob. I mean, that's kind of like a tennis ball. And so, they, but they're like, their entire throats are just like, <laughs> And it kind of reminds me of the story that Jeff Lewis told later today about the kid who, or sorry, not a kid, definitely not a kid, the consenting of age adult who choked on a 10 inch dick. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I've had a friend who was with a guy that was way too big and they had to go in like increments. Like every day, every time that she would come back from a date with him, she'd be like, guys, I made it another half inch. And we'd be like, whoo. And we would all start. (laughs) I don't think they ever made it all the way. I don't think so. But um, yeah. So anyways, after one cat threw up the other cat, (laughs) this, uh, this is wild. This has never happened before. Obviously be careful with candles around animals, kids, adults. I need to be careful around candles. You know what I need to be careful around? Those um oil diffusers. I can't even tell you how many fucking times I've knocked that shit over. And then there's oil. Talk about things in crevices. The oil in any house crevice. Like, if I get oil behind my radiator, is it my fault if the house explodes? Then uh, I'm sorry. Give me a refund for my vanilla scented sticks, okay? It's not worth an arsony charge. So anyways, the other cat... I had a candle lit. It jumps up on the fucking entertainment system and I watch it in slow motion as he lands on top of the candle. (laughs) 
he lands on top of the fucking candle and his chest puts the candle out. So all of a sudden he looks at me panicked and then he just takes off. He jumps 20 feet from the entertainment center and rips upstairs, running, sprinting all over the house. Meanwhile, all you can smell, the entire house is just filled with the scent of burnt singed fur. So I was chasing him because I'm like, Ollie, I need to see what the fuck happened. Like, are you on fucking fire right now? It smells like it, bro. And so I'm trying to get to him. And by the time he finally calms down and lets me see, all of his white patch on it. It was all singed and ashy. It was kind of adorable. It was like Ash Tuesday for him. So um, yeah, that was my morning and here we are. I also watched Real Housewives of Atlanta and there's a part that they keep on. The Real Housewives of Atlanta producers, they deserve Emmys. Like I am so entertained by their production. But anyways, they always flash back to Mama Joyce at BravoCon being asked to say three nice things about Candy's husband, Todd Tucker. <laughs> and she just goes, um, he's still short. <laughs> I don't know what it is about it, but it just... <laughs> I know, I hope that they're all like good behind the scenes and that they actually just do this bit for TV and whatever. But because Todd actually says that he's like, do you think your mom's just like being mean to me for camera for the camera? And Candy's like looking at him wide eyed like, no, Todd, what the fuck? We talked about this. Don't fucking say that shit. All right. We're not breaking the fourth wall today. Sorry. But um, yeah, no, it's just he's he's still short and they just keep on flashing back like every single episode this season. They play that clip. It's so funny. It's so funny. I wonder if the producers like to shade Todd because he used to be one of them and they are like, fuck, dude, like you achieved the American dream. You know, you went from behind the camera to getting called short by your mother-in-law every episode. It's great. So anyways, um, I just wanted to say that Candy's makeup in the confessional, the glitter on her eyes, it's not like just glitter. It's like sequins. She has like a mosaic stained glass window on her eyelids of just shimmer and then like stick on jewels all over her chest. And it's just so fascinating to look at and all I can say is that when I'm sitting there watching RHOA in my fucking crooked ass glasses holy sweater ripped leggings I have never felt more like they are in 3008 and I'm so 2000 and late like I'm so I'm just so far behind the trends what am I'm not I'm wearing like old navy what the fuck am I I used to wear glitter all over my face and body for all of fourth grade and my AOL screen name was Lil Star like, I am I just think that what I'm saying deep down is that I want to be more like the Real Houses of Atlanta when I grow up, which is now I'm fucking grown up and cleaning cat vomit and lighting my other cat on fire by accident. <laughs> my dad, um, when he was growing up, there was a fire at his house and they had a cat with kittens up in the attic and all the kittens died. I'm full of doomsday stories. Just stick around. You'll have fun here. So uh, getting on to the June 5th episode of Jeff Lewis Live, we had Shannon Badoa, we had Doug Bioden, and we had Shane Douglas. Okay, so we also had Jennifer from Bravo. The Bravo Marshal was in the room to make sure that Shannon, Miss Badoa, didn't reveal any secrets. It took less than five minutes for Shane to call Miss Jennifer a bitch in a good way. Like, hey, bitch, hey, bitch. But then Jennifer was silent after that. And I'd like to think she was stewing in resentment. Just sitting in the corner, fuming at, like, typing on her phone, like, this motherfucker just called me a bitch and I had to fucking smile at this little asshole. Ooh, I'm kind of in a gremlin mood today. Okay, so then we moved on to the reunion heard around the world. And I'm not talking about Splash This Ass Podcast and my beloved listeners. I fucking love you guys. Um, I also lost one Insta follower in the one week that I was off, but I did gain one back. So shout out to you both. Love ya. All right. So, um, Shannon was out at quiet woman with a friend ran into David Bador, David B of, of Shannon Bador of the Bador namesake. And they took a picture together 
And David wanted to post it for Insta followers. Interesting. <clears throat> Interesting. Uh, it went viral. It went viral. And Shannon had food in her teeth, which we later learned was in. <laughs> it was from an herbed meatball. Of course. What else would it be from? Love some herbs. I also hate when people don't tell you that there's something in your teeth. And the worst is when they're like, oh, I didn't notice. You didn't notice? You didn't notice? This giant bag of spinach hanging from my fucking molar? Like, how come you didn't notice? And meanwhile, it took me 0.02 seconds to see it in the bathroom mirror. Riddle me that. We're looking at the same face here, bitch. We're looking at the same fucking face. Are you telling me, Do you, is it a green screen? Like, is it this piece of spinach wearing an invisibility cloak? It's only, it's only apparent to my eye? Like, what the fuck? Open your eyes then when you look at me. Open your eyes when you look at me and tell me if there's spinach in my teeth or herbs from a meatball. Anyways, everyone went to Pride. It was Pride Fest. Da, 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 um, Jameson met up with... Okay, so while I was on my hiatus, I did see a wicked short clip on Insta of Jameson talking about a boyfriend, but he was. they were like, did you sleep over yet? And he was like, no. And... In that moment, I was shocked. And then I'm just shooketh even more after learning deeper about it today. Um, okay, so let's get into it. Well, first, Frank, the boy, Jameson's boy, was in the Gay Pride Parade marching choir. So, la la la, congratulations to him. Um, there's still been zero sleepovers. Still no sleepover this weekend. Their schedules aren't aligning. Now, in some defense, Doug, I believe, said that like there it is a a busy time for the choir folk right now. Um guys, three months. I'm sorry, three months and no sleepover. Look, everybody gets to have their own timeline. I'm just saying personally. Um, that, that wouldn't be a rainbow flag parade. It would just be a giant red flag parade. So also Frank's never been in Jameson's car, like uh, never a sleepover and never been in the car. Again, he's like, we take Ubers and we take his car, but like three months and you say you're dating. I don't, I don't know. Jameson seems to think they're just taking it slow and maybe they are. But I seems to think that they are perhaps just fuck buddies. That's what it sounds like to me. So what do I know but nothing? Jeff and Shannon went to Pride together. They also stopped at the highly coveted distinguished restaurant LA Buns, which Doug reminded us is attached to a car wash. <clears throat> Ew. I just like, I can't get out the image. If I was sitting at a restaurant right next to the car wash, like what if those water lines got mixed up and suddenly there's fucking washer fluid in your Slurpee? It, like, why is the, why is it that blue? Why is it that blue? I would be so mad if Jeff Lewis took me to LA buns instead of some bougie ass restaurant, like get diarrhea on your own time and treat me like a queen at steak 48, bitch. Some caller actually called in to basically share my same opinion and she was like, I went to L.A. Buns. It fucking sucked. And they talked her back into giving L.A. Buns a second chance. What do you mean a second chance? One's, no, one and done at L.A. Buns. One time is one chance too many, actually, for me. And I'm sorry, L.A. Buns. I'm sure you're great, but I'm not a full chump. I am bougie as fuck, and I would choose no food over good food. It's not even a money thing. It's not a money thing. It's I don't want diarrhea and weird gestational diseases. Now, we learn Taylor Armstrong of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills will be a friend to the OC this season. Love a crossover. I actually can't wait to see Shannon and Taylor's drunk shenanigans. I They would be so fun, I feel. Um, but Shannon was like... We're doing our cast trip in Mexico again this year. Ugh, it's Mexico again. And Doug's like, what the fuck? Be grateful. Like, you get to go to Mexico. What do you mean, oh, Mexico? No, no. I'm sorry, Doug, but fuck that. Shannon is right. They are always stuck going to Mexico because it's fucking Vicky's paradise. Like, that's so unfair. They should be able to go send them literally anywhere. Key West. Key West. Any, anywhere. I would rather see... The OC in Italy, Vicky in Paris, Vicky in Paris. Go visit one of Shannon's daughters who's going to school there. 
her daughters. Boom. There's your storyline. Okay. There's your reason for going <sighs> next season. I get it. Ames. I get it. I, we all know patience is not my virtue. Okay. I have others that I'm still defining now. Shannon's doing a live trace amigas tour with Vicky and Tamara by tour. I think it's just one stop right now, but Hey, that's fucking amazing. I, I genuinely mean that you can sit on your couch and do nothing all day. <clears throat> Been there, but, or you can get up with your friends and put on a live tour with one stop. That's I love it. So Jeff and Shane give Shannon shit. For her $200 VIP tickets. Now, this is from the same fool, and I'm talking about Jeffrey, that allegedly charges $10,000 for one night of dinner with him. One night. One night in Jeff. And I say allegedly because sometimes I can't tell if he's kidding or not. And I would so much rather live in a world where everyone is sane enough to not spend $10,000 fucking grand on one fucking dinner with Jeff Lewis. Like, come on, you guys. Come on. At least with Shannon's ticket prices, you are just going to see one Amiga. There's Trace. Trace. Uno, dos, Trace. Meanwhile, at your 10K dinner with Jeff, he'll be silently counting your drinks, judging your outfit, texting Stu under the table to meet him at home. We know. We know. I'm just saying, know who you're doing business with, people. Also, if that is true and Jeff actually does charge $10,000 a night, which again, I'm not convinced. I think that has to be a hoax and he meant to say $100. I still don't believe that anyone would pay, but again, I'm just a hater, I guess. But um, speaking of that, I think I would actually rather spend $10K on dinner with El Jefe. I'm sorry, Shannon, but the actual Trace Amiga show, when she started describing it, Um, It sounds like it's for a very target audience. And I think the audience is going to love it. But again, they're just very targeted. Um, Because Shannon, the Amigas are wearing costumes and singing and dancing. I'm sure people will love it. But when Shannon was talking about it, it just like reminded me of the Follies. Like the state Follies. Or like the performances I used to direct my cousins in when we were little. Like I learned one aunt smoked cigarettes and when she came to visit, I made my cousin do this whole play with me about how smoking kills (laughs) to her face. She kept on smoking. She's like, that's amazing, kids. I love I love that you guys just did that. And then she went out back and lit up. So later we found out that Shannon and Jeff only went to Pride. They only went out during Pride for like four hours, four hours of a hang that's nothing. That's child's play. That's like a few good stories worth of time versus Jameson who was home earlier, but day drinking much longer. So this is where I get confused. Jeff said he didn't like day drinking and absolutely never has. I never can day drink. I always need naps, blah, blah, blah. What the actual fuck? What the actual fuck? Did he not day drink all the time during his work lunches during flipping out? Am I making this up? Wouldn't they have margaritas and shit? Marti- like all of that. I know they drink after work, but like when they went on client lunches, weren't they like, ooh, don't we get a margarita today? And I don't care if it's just one drink. That was still day drinking. Am I right or am I right? I think I'm right. Okay, so we also talk about Doug's mom, who's here for a stay. Hi, Mrs. Buden. Um, she's here for 168 more hours. Not that anyone's counting. Well, actually, good news, Doug. It's down to like 165 by now. That's good. Um, Doug loves her so much and knows his mom is a great person. <laughs> but sometimes he wants to hit her over the head with a frying pan when she clears her throat too much. <laughs> agreed a fucking greed i dated a throat clearer and can i just say it was also a panty clearer as in my vagina leaves the building when it hears your mucus tract roaring at full throttle like why would i want your tongue? i don't want to be in your mouth now now that i know it's like filled with me oh ew no no so i know that Doug's not worried about his mom being a panty clearer, but I'm just saying PSA work on your fucking throat clears. Okay. Go drink some herbal tea. If you're a throat clearer and have some lozenges on deck. Now Shannon's about to be an empty nester. She has to move because her community voted on no filming since half of their neighborhood are basically real housewives. But 
I really think that she just wants to downsize so there's less rooms in the house for her girls to keep throwing secret parties. Oh my God. Like honestly, just dwindle down the square footage so that there's less opportunities. I am always amazed at kids like that. Like I'm such a scaredy cat breaking the rules. Circle back to me getting grounded at five fucking years old for days on end for drawing a balloon in pencil. So I don't know, maybe there was something to that because I would have been scared shitless to throw a party. And Shannon was saying that it's hard for her to discipline and she has her reasons for that. Like the whole divorce, she's, I think Shannon's an amazing mom and clearly loves her kids so much and they have the cutest relationship. So I think that they are a great family, but Jeff kept on kind of being like, okay, but like, you got to get this under control basically. Like that's. I know it's hard to discipline, but like, okay, like you got to figure it out. But it's like, oh my God, Jeff, uh, I cannot wait to see how you handle your future. Are you joking me? Are you Monroe is going to be like the splash of the town. Is that even a phrase? If not, she's going to make it one because, (gasps) because on splash of sass, we just, we're the splash of everything. We're a splash of fun. We're a splash of laughter. We're a splash of doomsday stories. You never know what you're going to get on here and you never know what your future is going to hold Jeff. So you might be asking Miss Bedore for advice on all this partying in, uh, I don't know, 10, 12 years from now. Not that I wish that upon anybody. In fact, I hope that Monroe ends up as a teenage entrepreneur and she is laughing to the bank as the head franchise owner of L.A. Buns, okay? And we know her dad will be her biggest customer and biggest promoter and we will still be listening to JLL 10 years from now as well as Splash of Sass because we're here to motherfucking stay, okay? I love you guys so much. We'll be back tomorrow, maybe. No, I'm just kidding. We will. Follow me on Insta. Watch my story. uh, Subscribe. All that shit. I love you guys so much. Bye. Splash. 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 Splash of Sass.